So I am far from an experienced knife maker, but I've dabbled in the past with some very simple knives, but I am going to consider this my first real knife that I've made. So I can't really speak the way a professional would with the vocabulary that you have after a lot of experience. So I'm going to go at this as a first time knife maker in my experience, sort of my level of experience, and sort of uh, from that perspective. So don't expect a much of a how-to, but more of a demonstration about how I went about it with the limited tools for knife making that I have. I started out with a piece of Damascus that came from Smoky Mountain Knife Works. It was just a scrap piece that I paid $10 for. I based the design off of one of my knives that was made by knife maker Pat Thomas. I've had the knife since I was young and I've always liked it, so I thought it would be a good one to sort of base my first knife off of. For this knife, I wanted to go really simple in the tools, so the majority of the knife is completed using files. And all the files that I'm using can be bought at uh, stores like Home Depot, Lowe's, and other hardware stores. The great thing about using files versus a belt grinder is not only the practice that you're going to get in doing the amount of filing it takes, but you're also going to work at a pace that allows you to make corrections and avoid certain mistakes. Once I completed filing out the profile of the blade, it was time to start filing the bevel. So the bevel is what brings the thickness of the knife down to the cutting edge. And for that, I just went for sort of a, I guess you call it a flat grind, but I'm doing it with a file so it did end up having a slight round to it. I'm sure the true professional could put a perfectly flat side on there. The Pat Thomas knife that I did, I laid a little straight edge across and it was pretty darn perfectly flat. I don't know if he uses files or if he used a belt grinder but it was a very nicely shaped blade. So um, I did have that to sort of compare things to, which was handy. Uh, for establishing that center line, I already skipped the part in the video, but I just used one of my woodworking marking gauges to um, kind of scribe that line down some Sharpie marker that I put on the cutting edge of the blade. For smoothing out the blade, I used sandpaper. It was wet, dry sandpaper, but I also experimented using a sharpening stone like you would do some draw filing, and it worked all right, but the sandpaper was the best and most effective way of going about it. It wouldn't be the final etch, but at this point I wanted to do a test etching just to sort of see what 600 grit would look like once it was etched, and I was pretty happy with the results in the end. I used muriatic acid instead of ferric chloride, which worked fine, it just wasn't quite as gray as you'd get with that ferric chloride. For heat treating the blade, I kind of went at it like a caveman with a torch, but I think that's okay for this first blade. In the future, I may use a heat treating service until maybe in the future I end up with a kiln myself. So I just took a acetylene torch and a propane torch, some little bricks stacked up as a backstop for the flame, heated it up to cherry red, held it there as long as I could stand, and then dipped it down in vegetable oil, and it seemed to work pretty good and held up to the file. Off camera, I tempered the blade in a toaster oven. Basically, I just stuck it in a toaster oven at around 400 degrees for two hours, and that draws some of the hardness back out of the steel and adds some toughness. With the blade complete, I could start making the handle, and the first step of that was making the finger guard. I did so using a piece of 3 16 or a little less than 3 16 inch brass stock. I drilled and fouled out the hole to fit the tang so it would fit snugly right at the point where the blade and the tang meet. To make things easy to handle, I did all that drilling and filing before I cut it out of the larger piece of brass. With that piece cut out, I flattened it and prepared for playing with fire, and that is soldering on the finger guard onto the blade itself. I wrapped the blade in a wet rag to protect the heat treatment, and then soldered it on with an acetylene torch and some plumber's solder along with some of my jeweler's flux. For a handle, I wanted to do a stacked design with multiple materials. I ended up using black plastic, brass, leather, and wood. The black plastic came from a 25-pound bucket of screws. I just broke off the lid and then cut out the pieces on the bandsaw and drilled out the centers. After that, I used one of those pieces to trace out the same shape onto some sheet brass. This was 16 or 18 gauge, and then drilled out those same holes to fit the tangs and filed them to shape. Then I cut all those pieces out until I had enough to make my handle. I lightly scuffed up these pieces in preparing them for epoxying together the handle and then started making the leather spacers. I did so pretty much the same way as the plastic and brass spacers, but I cut out the holes in the centers using a 1 8 and about a 3 8 inch chisel to fit the tang. With the handle material prepped, I decided the order that I wanted them all and then stacked them all up on the workbench. Mixed up some 5 minute epoxy and started putting them all on the tang. I had to move pretty quick as is it was only 5 minute epoxy, 
A wiser choice would probably be to use a slower set epoxy, something like a 20 minute set, which would give you a little more time to put the handle together. I didn't really think through the next step, which was a bad idea, but it ended up working out, and that was clamping the whole handle together. I did so using some F-style clamps against the bench with a piece of wood that was notched around the blade. At this point, the handle is fairly crude, and you can see there that I went with a piece of cherry to complete the handle. I roughed off the excess material on my bandsaw, both the wood and the leather. If you don't have a bandsaw to help with this step, using files will be just fine, or you could use some sort of a little coping saw and do it by hand. To better secure the handle material to the tang of the knife, I drilled a hole through the wood, through the tang of the knife, and then pinned it on with a brass pin. I just put some glue down in the hole and around the pin and hammered it in, and that will kind of further secure the handle material onto the tang, but it also looks pretty cool once the handle is all finished down to its final shape. At this point, I wanted to do the final etching on the Damascus blade, so I started out by cleaning up the finger guard with some sandpaper. It made it easy to take a dowel rod and then kind of cut it at a very acute angle to where I could get right up against the blade. I then protected the finger guard with some fingernail polish to where the muriatic acid wouldn't copper plate it and then etched the blade. Once it was etched, I protected the blade with some masking tape. Now for the step of getting this whole thing more shaped up like a real knife was shaping out the handle. For that, I did get a little more advanced and used a 2x72 belt grinder. The belt that I'm using to shape out the handle is a Norton Blaze belt. I ordered it from Texas Knife Makers. I ordered some supplies for completing this knife and then for making um, some future knives. But that belt grinder made for much quicker work of shaping out the handle, but all that shaping could be done with files. All of the final shaping on the handle of the knife that I made was done with files. Um, finishing it off with a fairly fine cut file before moving to sandpaper. I decided to put a brass cap on the end of the handle as in the future I thought it would be nice to engrave both that cap and the finger guard. The cap was cut out of the same brass that I made the spacers and then I scuffed it up with the back of my file along with the back of the wood that it would be glued to. I mixed up some epoxy and epoxied it on. There's probably a lot of different ways you could attach this, but I've found that doing something as simple as this does hold up pretty good, and I've also seen a lot of other knives made by higher-end knife makers that held up fine with those caps epoxied on the same way. Once the epoxy was set, I went ahead and ground it down flush with the handle, and then finished the shaping with sandpaper. I ended up sanding up to about 320 grit on both the wood and the leather. For finishing the handle, you got a lot of options, but I went pretty simple and just used some wood stain on both the cherry and the leather. On the cherry, I used a cherry stain, and on the leather, I used some sort of a dark walnut, and that was just to sort of even out those little leather spacers to where you couldn't see the difference between um, one to the next quite as much. And I didn't really know what I wanted to do with a top coat, but I wanted to have uh, other options down the road in case I changed my mind. So I just used some mineral oil. And after a while, I, that would end up drying up enough to where if I wanted to put something else on it, I could. And uh, there it is. I ended up putting a little bit of beeswax later on on the leather spacers after this clip. Um, but you'll see that in the pictures in the end. For sharpening the knife, I just use a ceramic sharpening stone. This is the same one I use on my chisels and small bla um, plain blades. And it was pretty simple, nothing much to it. Just made sure that I maintained that same angle. And as every knife video apparently ends with cutting paper, um, because that happens a lot when you use knives. Um, but I understand why people are doing it. But I used a Lee Valley catalog, which has fairly thin paper and just sharpened it until it could take a fairly clean slice. It wasn't clean like some brand new uh, strop razor blade would be, but I was pretty impressed uh, for sort of the rudimentary ways that I went about making this knife. So there's my first knife. Well, this was an especially fun project for me to sort of break up my norm of what I do day to day. Did the knife turn out perfect? Absolutely not, but it was a really fun project. I learned a lot and look forward to future knives and videos of making them. If you enjoyed seeing this knife be made and you're not already a subscriber to the channel, click the red button on the screen and you'll get updates when I post future videos of projects like this and many others. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.